My name's Rachel. I am a circus student. I train in contortion. I train in aerial art, aerial hoop, trapeze. I also am a registered dietitian. I'm just super interested in health and nutrition. My relationship with my bio has been a little bit weird. I've actually gained and lost weight two times. I gained weight because I thought I was too skinny in high school. I kind of felt like guys weren't giving me attention because I was like a twig, I was like 108 pounds. When I gained weight, I basically would eat to the point where sometimes I threw up because I probably shouldn't have kept eating, but I did anyways. I was one of those people that I could eat anything and not gain weight. So I got frustrated. I'm like, no, you're gonna gain weight. And I would down it with an inshore. So that was not healthy. And then when I lost weight, I would barely eat. I would eat like salads. So that's why I lost weight because I was basically starving myself. But ever since I started doing contortion, I started to look at my body as something different than just looks. I started to look at it as for, you know, what it can do. So I think it's helped me to have a more positive relationship with my body. I would try to play sports as a kid and I was pretty much bad at everything. I was pretty much a person that tried to be athletic, but it just, I didn't have that natural athletic ability. In high school, I could do a split, but there's so many girls I can do a split. It wasn't something that registered as a talent to me. What made me realize I had a talent was when I started going to the flexibility classes and I progressed super fast, way faster than everyone. I actually got to the point where I was better than the teacher. I started my social media about six months into my journey. My sole purpose of starting my Instagram was to follow other girls that did what I do, to kind of see like the new tricks they were doing so I can copy, you know, things like that. That's when I found out that a lot of the girls that do pole, they also do other things, and which was circus. So I would have never even found out about circus if it was for Instagram. And Instagram girls were my coaches. I would watch their videos, I would watch what they did, and I would try my best to mimic, study their body and their movements and try to mimic it or see what stretches would work with this skill. I would post my progress on Instagram, they would comment on it, I would comment on theirs. Social media is basically the reason why I do what I do. The first one went viral, I was, I was shocked. It really just happened out of nowhere. It was like I posted something and people came in like waves. It was just waves of people coming. It was literally me in a parking lot with my back leg up on the wall doing a split with sneakers on. And ever since that one photo that went viral, they kept going viral. I started to see what it is that they like and I just stuck with posting that. When I do like the sexy photos, it's actually something I enjoy. I almost feel like it's my alter ego. It almost doesn't seem like that's me. It's like a part of me that just comes out on camera. I definitely get comments that discourage me all the time. And the reason I say that is because I'm, I'm definitely a little bit more sensitive. So it took me a while to not get bothered by it. Now I'm not so much bothered by it because I'm so used to it and I realize that, you know, some people are just mad. They're just mad. There definitely have been times where I looked at a comment and it made me not even want to post on Instagram anymore. Or maybe I was having a bad day and then I read a negative comment and it kind of made my day a little bit worse. I was contemplating getting a boob job when I started Instagram because I kept hearing people talk about how small my chest was and it made me feel bad. And I, and I kept thinking, well, it isn't so hard to just go to the doctor and get them done and then they won't be saying anything. But then I thought I can get them done and then they'll be calling them fake. You know, I actually have um, lip filler, so I'm not gonna be, you know, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I don't have a problem with plastic surgery. I do feel like it's kind of like a mask for insecurities. And now, nowadays, it's kind of like, why not? Like, if you're insecure about your body and it's really that simple as going to a doctor and fixing whatever it is that you're insecure about, you can kind of see why people get plastic surgery. And at the end of the day, I don't care what the next person does with their body because it's their body. You know, it has nothing to do with me. It's your choice. I was not as flexible as people think when I started. My middle split was super far from the ground. Like I never thought I'd be able to do a middle split in my life. I promise you. The reason why I kept going, even though I felt like it was difficult, was just out of the fact that I wanted to do it badly. And I'm the type of person where when I really want something, like I'm gonna do whatever I have to do to get it. And I think that's what a lot of people are missing, that they don't genuinely really want something bad enough that they're going to be consistent with it. I believe that nutrition in which you eat determines everything, and that's why I got into it. I think it determines your health, how long you live, the way you look, the way you feel. It determines everything. 
the better you eat, the better you train. Even with flexibility, if you have a bunch of inflammation going on in your body, you're gonna have a way harder time getting flexible. But if you're constantly eating an anti-inflammatory based diet, which is you know rich in vegetables and fruits, uh, whole grains, then you're going to have a lot easier time, not only recovering from your workout, but being able to um, have more mobility. My focus on what I can do more so than how I look has changed my training and the fact that I train for a purpose. So I actually train harder. When you're training for a skill versus to look a certain way, you're doing it because you love it. You're not doing it because you have to. And that in turn changed my body. And I think that that's important for people to find something that they genuinely love doing instead of just working out because they have to. I think that's why a lot of people don't work out because they feel like it's a chore. A typical workout for me is weird <laughs> because I do so many different things. CrossFit I do almost every day. My hand balancing training I do every day. Flexibility four times a week. And what it all comes down to too sometimes is just what I'm feeling like doing at the moment. Like there's some days I feel like doing pole and I go doing pole. And then there's some days where I just feel like stretching so I might stretch. So it really just depends on my mood. Believe it or not, I actually have not had very many injuries. The only injury I ever had was an accident where I fell off the pole and I broke my teeth. I actually should have broken a lot more than my teeth because it was a really, <laughs> it was a really hard fall. So I'm actually thankful that that was all that happened. But from contortion, I actually have never had an injury. When I started all this, I was just a girl working at Starbucks trying to make it through school. <laughs> And then I just, I literally out of nowhere just evolved and became something that I never would think I would become. Never thought I would be able to do these things and never thought I would be at the point where I'm training other people to do these things. If you told me that like four years ago, I probably would not have believed you. I see myself training people worldwide. That's really my dream, to be able to travel, teach, and just inspire people to get into what I do because you don't see too many black women in circus. You don't see too many thicker girls in circus. Usually you kind of see one type of person. So that's why it's amazing that I've gotten to a point where, you know, now people are inspired by me.